On behalf of the Fun Boys, I'm Lee Pogue, a member of the English Department here at Iowa State, and I'm here with science fiction author Rudy Rucker. Rudy received a bachelor's degree at Swarthmore, a PhD in mathematics at Rutgers University, did advanced work with Kurt Godel at the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton, has taught in the State University of New York system at the State University College at Geneseo, and at the Mathematics Institute at the University of Heidelberg. Uh, he's written several science books uh, in Geometry, Relativity in the Fourth Dimension, Infinity in the Mind, The Fourth Dimension, and How to Get There. He's also written several novels, uh, White Light, Space-Time Donuts, Software, The Sex Sphere, and is now working on a new novel, The Masters of Space and Time. He also is the author of a collection of short fiction entitled The 57th Franz Kafka. I have some questions here for you, Reedy. Your most obscure book, by my recollection, is a collection of the writings of C.H. Hinton that you edited for Dover. What attracted you to Hinton's work in the first place, and how does that attraction speak to your own sense of the relationship of science and fiction? Well, Hinton was uh, a writer in the 1800s who was very interested in the fourth dimension, and he was writing science fiction, although then they didn't call it science fiction, they called it scientific romances. Uh, the fourth dimension is, is a key concept in science fiction. Uh, we use it to symbolize many things. On the subtext level, it stands for human liberation from oppressive circumstances. He lived in England, and he was caught in bed with two women. He was arrested for bigamy. They thought the other woman was his wife's sister, but it turned out it was he was a bigamist, and he had to go to Japan for a year. And it didn't work out too well there, so he came to America. How do you see your relationship to philosophy? Well, that's usually when I do a book, uh, I have a, a philosophical concept that I'm interested in. Uh, for instance, in my first novel, Space Time Donuts, I was interested in the structure of space. We had an, an idea called circular scale there. Then in White Light, I was interested in levels of infinity. In uh, software, I was interested in uh, Godel's incompleteness theorem. And in, in the sex sphere, I was interested in uh, infinite dimensional space. I, I like to take an abstract metaphysical concept and convert it into a funkadelic fact. What do you see as the connection in your own work between science and fiction? Or maybe I can phrase that, where is the fiction in science? Well, in, uh, in Space Time Donuts, I talked to a scientist who had finally worked his way out to the place where science shades into fiction. I mean, science is a type of fiction, really. It's uh, trying to find some order in the world and the, there's also it works the other way in that uh, the uh, let me show you the jacket I got here in Iowa State I'm very proud of this I don't know if any of y'all have ever seen this See, it says Iowa State on the back I mean there may be a lot of them out here but I'm gonna be the only one in Lynchburg Virginia to have an Iowa State jacket I another care. person that, that likes to wear Iowa State jackets is the uh, the philosopher Richard Rorty uh, one of the thing, one of the, the positions that Rorty uh, holds to is the notion that that everything is literature, and that then science and philosophy are simply subsets of literature. What's your response to that kind of idea? Oh, I, I love an idea like that. I view uh, if it's written down and, and people can groove on it, it's you know it's literature. Could you tell us something about uh, your understanding of poetry and and who your who your, who your favorite poets are these days? Okay, sure. The the book, I'm just digging in my knapsack here. I'm going to get it out. I'll read you a poem. It's called Light, Fuse, and Get Away. Uh, that's what they always put on firecrackers, you know, light, fuse, and get away. And uh, my favorite poet, I'll see right away, is a, a man called Ansel Mahalo, H-O-L-L-O. -L -L -O. He's a very, very fine poet and uh, a friend of mine also. He's a science fiction reader. Uh, let me just read you one of these, if you don't mind. This one I wrote recently is called Causes of Blindness. A champagne cork, exploding marijuana seed, viewing solar eclipses, staring at the sun on acid, breaking coke bottles with rocks, snowballs, oh, get it over with, sharp sticks, firecrackers, oral sex with syphilitics, reading in dim light, living forever in the dark. Generation by generation, the eyes migrate upwards. Too much light forever in the dark. In a way, that, that has uh, the quality of, of uh, poetry to it, of, of, of modern-day poetry to it. You've worked as a cartoonist, you've worked as a teacher, you've worked as a researcher, but 
your, one of your more recent occupations is as lead singer for a rock band by the name of the Dead Pigs. Uh, where does rock and roll fit into your life and into your work? Well, I'll just sum it up with the refrain from uh, one of the songs that I wrote and we used to sing. Do your folks think you are a stranger? Do your friends think you'd be too weird? Well, it's hard to learn to live with so much danger, baby, year after year after year after year. Talk with me today. Well, thanks, Lee. It's really been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you all enjoy the show.